Economic growth is supposed to make us happier and healthier, but as the damaging effects of climate change and the financial crisis are felt around the world, increasing numbers of people are asking what we can do to improve the model. I'm going to Brixton in South London to visit a community that are trialling a new economic system, one that values people and planet as well as profit. Brixton is part of the growing Transition Town movement, a worldwide network of people who are reshaping their local economies to cut carbon emissions and build stronger communities. Josh, and it all starts with the Brixton Pound. The power to create and allocate money into the economy is probably the most important element of capitalism. And if we allow a load of large private uh, profit-making organizations that so um, about banks yep <laughs> they have yeah. to be called banks yeah. to control it then the outcomes of our economy will reflect their objectives and their motives and local currency is one way of sort of trying to take back some of that power and say well this is our town we want to ensure that the way that money moves around actually supports the local economy the Brixton pound can only be spent in local independent shops where does one get a Brixton pound? Where do we do this exchange? Well, one of the best places to get them is here in Morley's, um, where you can get them in the menswear department, actually. <laughs> this is not where you might imagine. I thought you might see... Yeah, so this is an independently owned department store. You lead the way. I'm yeah, sure so let's get sure. some Brixton pounds, please. Yes, no problem, sir. Yeah. How many would you like? I think I'm going to go for 25, please. One Brixton pound is equivalent to one pound sterling, and there are currently 30,000 in circulation. Look at that. Thank you very much. What do you reckon about these Brixton pounds? I think it's quite cool Brixton has this own money. Yeah. Quite popular, especially the one with David Bowie. That's why we don't yeah. have any at the moment, oh, I'm right. afraid. Why have you got one with David Bowie on it? That's cool. The idea is still in its infancy, but already the Brixton Pound is accepted in 200 outlets. There it is. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Shopkeepers can only re-spend the currency with local suppliers, which helps create a market for locally grown and produced goods and cuts carbon emissions from transport. This is a Brixton Pound sauce. It's actually made from uh, ingredients in the market as well named after our little currency here We've in Brixton. We've got to buy some Brixton pound <laughs> sauce, come on. So that's £10.50, please. £10.50. And well, that's good. It feels nice to be kind of contributing to a local economy, being absolutely sure that the money is staying here when we could have gone into a supermarket around the corner, bought three bottles of chilli sauce that may have been flown from halfway around the world, but we know for a fact that this has come yeah. from literally it's next been... door. Made in Brixton, using Brixton ingredients from the market, and the money is staying here and helping to pay our staff, who are all local. We become too dependent on these global supply chains, on these big supermarkets for everything. And if there is a shock to the system, if oil prices go up yeah. or there's a financial crisis, we're then really vulnerable. And more importantly, really, there isn't enough fossil fuels left to maintain this system. Yeah. So we need networks in place that make us adapt to a low energy future. Supporting local shops isn't the only way Brixton residents are moving away from a purely profit-driven economy. By rethinking the area's energy supply, Agamemnon Otero is taking sustainable business to new heights. So we'll take a little... Uh... Wow, nice view. That's where the energy used to come from. That's the energy station. That's where all the laws are made about who gets to have what energy. And uh, the financing, global capital right there. The banking center of the world. Yeah. The corporate model is they have one legal obligation. Give their shareholders the largest amount of profit in the shortest amount of time. It doesn't matter if it's strip mining in Nigeria or Algeria. They just push and push and push. We want to be a viable financial company but with social aims. OK. Agamemnon runs London's first renewable ah, energy cooperative. Here we go. Here's some you, you made earlier. Yeah. This 58,000 pound solar array was paid for by over 100 local investors, most of whom live less than two kilometers away. It gives yeah. us a sense of how it works. OK. So these panels right now get, generate energy, and it powers the lifts in, in, this, in the communal spaces, and then it's yeah. sold onto the grid. Okay. And we get a subsidy from, from the government for generating energy, and then we get a per kilowatt from the energy company that buys it from us. Okay. That money 
Think of it as one big river. It's okay. got a big flow. The first pot that it falls into, that goes into making sure the administration of these panels and the upkeep is done. Then the overflow goes into a community energy efficiency fund, which pays for education and apprenticeships. And then when that's full, it goes into the returns to the people. And they can have it in Brixton pounds, the local currency, or they can have it in pound sterling. If there's more than 3%, we're gonna take the excess from that and put it back into the community energy efficiency fund. Okay. That's how it works. I've got you. You don't have to have huge returns. You need to have reasonable returns over long periods of times, which facilitate the infrastructure you need, the well-being you need, the energy you need. And, um, and that's why decentralized, cooperatively owned renewable energy it stands in the face of all that. And you're looking at our next project right here. Soon, these five roofs will be covered with over 180 solar panels. Energy efficiency audits are funded by income from the panels, benefiting residents such as Shamsa Osman Guri. You see, this is a classic thing that everybody has here. You see, so you've got one, two, three things going in there, and then all those things are on standby. Because if you leave me on standby, it uses a third the energy. And then you can put this to say, I'm gonna, I want everything off at 12 o'clock. Yeah, have it turn off at 12. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so that would reduce that amount, right? You can reduce that by 70%. More efficient fittings will help residents cut their bills and their carbon emissions. I hope it's a summer. A lot of people can have the same thing. Take care. Bye. 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 Agamemnon hopes to transform this whole area and not just through energy. Okay, we can use that for solar. Those ones aren't so good for solar, but maybe they are good for solar thermal. What about this big green space here? Let's dig this up and turn it into a community garden. His other project is to create a chain of food plots at bus stops, starting with one right at the end of his street. We were talking about the garden. Somebody suggested, why don't we actually okay. work on it ourselves? And of course, what you've got is the youngsters getting involved, the old age pensioners, such as, well, nearly, nearly me. It's really brought the street together. Like, since this has started, like, there's been a load of street parties and stuff like that. By valuing more than just profit, these communities are trying to create a more balanced and sustainable economy. People are fed up with the financing system the way it is, and they're fed up with the decisions being made for them, and they're fed up with the impact on the environment. And these are three ways where you can re-embed economics, which is taking over everything, into the community, and the community sits inside the environment.